Let's take a look at the multi-comp build of the 6809 FPGA retro computer. The FPGA card is a QM Tech EP4 CE15 Cyclone 4 FPGA card and it's mounted on a Landboards retro EP4 CE15 card. The card has uh, quite a few built-in capabilities. There's one megabit SRAM or one megabyte SRAM under the FPGA card. There's a PS2 connector, USB connector full-sized for powering the card and providing a serial port, VGA monitor connector, and a SD card connector. Here's the base card. You can see the one megabyte SRAM in the sort of center right. And to the left of that is a five volt connector. There's also an on the far left, the 50 pin I.O. connector that connects out extra I.O. pins from the FPGA. In the bottom left, there are six pins that can be pulled up inside of the FPGA and provide configuration. One of these in this demo selects between serial display or video on the VGA. The part to the next, uh, the SD card slot, and you can see the video connector on the VGA to the right. It's two bits of red, two bits of green, two bits of blue. Uh, above that to the left is the USB to serial part and the other connectors already mentioned. We'll provide a wiki link in the bottom and this is the wiki page that we have that describes it on our wiki site. The particular FPGA build has a GitHub repo as well and inside of that repo it has the files you need to build the FPGA. One of the folders is the SD card image itself. The other one here is the FPGA build showing the folders where the files are at. Microcomputer.vhd is the top level and there's the Art Cordis project file. The SD card description is down in here. There's a little bit better description and it's burned using Bellina Etcher in Windows. When you boot the card, it comes up with a Camel fourth interpreter or fourth interpretive language. And if you do one load, it will load off the SD card. All of the images that are on the card, all the fourth keywords, and the particular thing you want to run can be shown. All the words can be shown with word, words in uppercase. Some of the more useful keywords are highlighted here. SD fourth, basic, Fusix, Nitrous, OS9, Flex, Buggy, which is another system, and uh, they can individually be run. Fusix is a Unix-like operating system, and to run it, you just type Fusix and then enter, and it'll boot, and it shows 512K of total RAM there. Hit Control D to log in as root and you're in a Unix shell where LS and other things like that work. PWD prints the working directory and we're in the root folder right now. We can switch directories with CD to the back to the root of the drive itself. You can see the usual sort of folders, bin, etc., those sorts of things. LS-AL will list the complete directory contents with permissions and creation dates and that sort of thing can switch to the user and take a look at what's in there. Uh, I think that's all where we probably already were. Switch over to source and take a look in there with an LS. There's fig fourth and uh, pilot, Ron's pilot I believe. Can switch to the fourth directory and take a look in there. At what's What folder, folder files are in there. Let's take a look at what else is on the system. If we switch over to the bin folder uh, quite a few files just very quickly rolled by. Let's take a quicker look and see what comes out. Quite a few uh, pieces of code on here already. You can scroll up because we're in a terminal window on the computer and look at some of the files. It looks like there's an adventure program up there. An assembler for the 6809 is up there. You see backgammon, the usual sorts of things and there's a CPP it looks like a C compiler which is a very nice thing to have. Pilot another programming language ancient programming language. Uptime shows we've been up for about two minutes and 20 seconds. If we run pilot it'll run Ron's pilot interpreter. 
I think it needs a file and doesn't have one. Yeah, we do the question mark for help, but it should give us a help. And yeah, it tells us what we need to do with the file name. Looks like it's required. Let's take a look at what else is on user bin out of the box. Sorry for the slow typing. Let's see what's up there. Quite a few things. We looked at a few of them earlier. Uh, one of the classic games is Wumpus, W-U-M-P at the bottom. Let's see what that looks like. I have no idea how to run that. It's been way too long. Uh, there's a bunch of rooms and you can shoot stuff and you can move around and hunt the Wumpus. Looks like 20 rooms, three tunnels, some bottomless pits, all sorts of stuff. Been a long, long time. If I've even played this at all, don't remember for sure. I'll ask you when you run it, hey, you're in a room, you smell something, there's bats. What do you want to do? Do you want to move or shoot? And then you have to give it a list of rooms to shoot. Uh, don't remember how to do any of this, but I shot a two, or I did a two. Maybe it should have been a list of rooms. Now I'm in room 11, and uh, I'm already bored. Been too long, don't know how to play it. Cleared the screen in the terminal just to get a clear screen. There is a man feature. Uh, for instance, WAL is, right, is right to all users. Let's take a look at the other OSs that are on this SD card. Same procedure, rebooting the card with the reset button on the card. And one load. I think I had a typo in there somewhere, even though it's hard to see. Uh, prints the space after you hit the load, if it was correct, and then you see some numbers go down the screen, which tells you you're loading off the SD card. Probably, I guess, different pages of fourth. And we can do the same thing for words to see what the other operating system choices are. And let's uh, see what we want to run next. All right, let's go run Nitros 9, another nice operating system from back in the day. Same procedure, just try Nitros 9. And it boots up pretty quickly, asks you for the time when you come up. He is running Nitros 9 level 2, which I think is better than level 1, because that's what uh, Neil did originally. And you put in the date. It does seem to be 20K, 2, Y2K compliant, which is a nice thing to have. LS works, but the classic LS-AL doesn't work. Let's do a change directory into one of the folders that's shown, the commands folder, and take a look at what's in there. Also, very nice pile of commands listed there, quite a few. Dir using DIR returned an error, so it looks like it's just AL. Let's take a look at basic 09 on here. Should be another classic basic. Looks pretty good. It's got a 6.9K of RAM free, wow. <laughs> Not too impressive, I guess. And we'll try the usual list of commands to exit out of basic. Cleared the screen again to get a good start here in the terminal. There is a help system built in as well. If you do help, help, it'll give you the help. And you can hit enter to get a list of all the things that you can get help on. There's quite a few choices here to get information on, which is nice to have. The help system looks pretty basic. It uh, doesn't give you a list of what the options are, unfortunately. To get a more detailed look at the directory structure, you can do a DIR-E, and it'll show you more information in typical fields. Let's do that on the commands folder and see what files are in there. One of the nice things it does is pause after screen full of data. Now, screen full of data is shorter on the actual video display than it is here, but you can see there's quite a few Typical unix -y sort of uh, keywords, commands here that you can do. Let's reboot with the same process again. Hit the reset button and then do one load. And see what operating system we want to run next. It's convenient. It's very quick. It doesn't look like you have to sync the disk with any of these operating systems, at least from the little bit I could find on some of them up on the interwebs. Take a look at the words here again and see what uh, one we want to try next. I like the coloring scheme here. It's the same on the video display. This is just easier to read. Uh, quite a few choices there. Let's see. Last time we did Nitros. Uh, let's run Buggy just for fun and see what that looks like. It's got a little bit of a help system too. And it looks like it's a pretty minimal debugger, but it does have an assembler, which is nice. 
Oh, here's the assembler, and right below it is a disassembler, which is a nice thing to have as well. Yeah, it looks like a pretty nice little development environment. If we hit R, we can get a dump of the registers. And it looks like it has an X modem utility built in, which is nice to have. Unfortunately, the help system doesn't look like it provides any details of the particular things. It'll just print the same help screen again, but still nice to have. All right, let's reboot and try the next operating system. Same procedure, one load. Wait a little bit for the SD card to be accessed. Doesn't take too long. I think it could be made to do that automatically. I'm not really sure. You could probably run any of the things you want to run automatically if you do the right thing inside the fourth side of this. Quite a few keywords here in fourth. Let's see, what one do we want to play with next? Eh, take a look at the list. Looks, well, we'll skip the basics for the moment. Ah, there's a Cubix, another Unix-like operating system. Let's go ahead and run that. And the RAM test passed. Let's try help and see. Ah, good, there's a help system in here as well with uh, prompting for other topics. Let's see what it says for basic in terms of help. Another built-in basic. And it looks helpful. Nice. Help Dur shows quite a few options, which is nice to see as well. Yeah, let's go ahead and run the basic and see what it looks like. Yeah, very minimal, not a lot of uh, banner. And exit gets us right out of it, so we guessed right on that one. There's a helpful web page on Cubix and uh, claims that there's quite a bit of information out there, although it wasn't really truly obvious on where to find it. But it uh, looks like it has quite a few facilities. I didn't see the C compiler. We did run the basic and uh, it did run. Quite a few other nice little features there. A little APL, that's interesting, and an 8080 simulator. Uh, real interesting. Yeah, it does claim some documentations out there somewhere. Well, hopefully that gave a quick shot or a quick show of what can be done with Neil Crook's build of the 6809. And we have a build of this for this particular card also up in our GitHub and you should be able to get there from the wiki link provided. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products and we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of our cards. Thanks for watching our video and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.